Seven Figure Marketer Ben Murray here, and you're about to watch a special video about how you can profit from the shift of offline based chains to online niche e commerce stores and what many call the biggest money making opportunity in the next five years. Specifically, in this pre video, we're going to go over three things. So, number one, what type of e commerce store you can easily create and will work best in the future? Number two, how to identify the best profitable e commerce niches for your store? And number three, some tips on how to start finding products to sell. Now, this knowledge I want to share with you is all from information involving niche stores and brands that have started from total scratch online and continue to profit month after month our team has analyzed. And even if you're already familiar with building an e-commerce site or maybe even bought some products or courses, well, make sure to stick around for the next few minutes because I'll be sharing some information you probably haven't heard that relates to building a lasting brand in a store that profits long term instead of maybe trying to find some junky products and flip them and make a few bucks over a weekend. Now, I probably don't need to go into great depth explaining why building your own niche e-commerce store or even an affiliate marketing based store can set you up for a massive opportunity right now. As the Oracle of Omaha himself, Warren Buffett, recently said in an annual Berkshire Hathaway meeting, the retail store is now online. And thousands of businesses are now closing their offline locations simply because they can't compete with automation and online commerce today. And I'm not just talking about losing business to Amazon.com. Now, obviously, there are major causes behind the disruption. But due to advancements and severe reduction in cost and technologies of shipping, manufacturing, production, and online selling, just about anyone can set up a true physical products business now. And niche e-commerce stores are set to explode this year. And two of the biggest platforms that will allow you to build legitimate six, seven, and maybe eight figure businesses are Shopify and WooCommerce. And these platforms don't require a lot of technical knowledge to use and are very inexpensive to start out with. And you don't need to invest in inventory or store products in your garage to get started either. So that being said, let's dive into some training and make sure to leave a comment below and sign up below the video for more free training and to learn about a special software we're going to be talking about later called Shopee Raider. It's going to help automate the growth of your e-commerce stores and affiliate stores. So the first question that comes up when creating a store or even starting a business is what type of store works today and what niche should I be in or what type of e-commerce store should you create that actually makes money each month and grows for the long term and what category of products or type of products should you sell in your store? So we're going to be going over four keys in this video. But first, let's define what a niche even is. So what do I mean by a niche? Well, this just relates to products or interests that appeal to a small subsection of a broader category. So for example, we can take the general industry of beauty and then a sub niche or niche within beauty is makeup. And then an even smaller niche within beauty within makeup itself could be organic makeup. And then we can have, for example, uh, the industry of pet products. Now, a niche within that is just cat toys. And then a niche, a sub niche within cat toys could be just mouse toys or mouse related toys. So what types of stores and types of niches will be the easiest to get into and scale for someone starting today from scratch? And then how do you find the profitable ones? Well, uh, the strategy that we found that works best when we analyzed many stores that succeeded was the following. What you want to do is create a monopoly of a small sub niche and scale outward first. Start small and create a monopoly around one sub niche idea, meaning that you have the best products, the best information, the best service, and you own that sub niche the best that you can. For example, you can choose to sell garden gnomes, but you need to be the store that's known for having the best selection to pick from, the best content on how to use garden gnomes in your garden. Uh, you'd be the, known as the go-to person or the go-to store for garden gnomes on the internet. Then once you've owned a very small part, begin to expand outward. Now I call this like the onion theory of business and this is in fact what Walmart did to grow so big. But you start a very small sub niche, kind of like the middle of the onion, and then add different products and began to expand outward. And these can be you know thought of as different sections of the onion layered on top. So you can start with garden gnomes. And then you can include other garden statues after you've really uh, defined and you know became the guy for garden gnomes and, and you know built your first 100 followers or 100 true fans. And you can expand out to gardening tools and then lawn equipment. And then so on building your brand and building up a list of real fans as you scale up. So don't just start with a store that has every product in the world because it'll be hard to stand out through the competition. Uh, there's too many me too stores out there. So you just want to own a small sub niche or category first and then expand outward. Now the next thing as far as picking the niche is you need to pick something that you can deliver expert knowledge and value on to cut through all the noise. 
So either something you already know a lot about or something you're at least very interested in and will be for and will be interested in for the long run. Now in the online world, there's tons of products and me too shops out there. And if you can differentiate and provide value in places that other stores can, not you're going to have a massive advantage today. So for instance, if you consider yourself to be a gardening gnome expert and know what types of products sell well and which types of gnomes people need, etc., and the history of where they're made, uh, and even though the demand might not be as great as, say, dog toys, well, you have a far better chance of dominating your space and scaling your business up than if you choose to sell dog toys, but you really don't know anything about the competitive advantages or any inf information about dogs or, uh, or dog toys out there at all. So yes, you're gonna, by picking dog tours, you're gonna pick a more in-demand niche. But there's not gonna really be anything separating you from the thousands and thousands of other dog toy stores out there, and nothing to really help grow your brand and build those first 1,000 fans who will refer your business and continue to buy from you. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not really an expert or great at anything, there's nothing I can provide that's gonna you know, have someone come to my store as opposed to someone else's, well, chances are you're probably wrong, but even still, go ahead and pick a niche that you're passionate about and know you want to wake up each day and continue to work on. So forget about keyword ranking tools or what's trending on Amazon. You know, Pick something that you are passionate about and you want to work on long term. Now, if you're not excited about what you're selling uh, and you're not interested in providing real value and information and content, it's going to be difficult to get through those initial launch periods where there's not a lot of sales continue to grow your brand and create content day in and day out about uh, something that's boring to you. Now you need to focus on uh, how much value you can add and the more unique value you can add, well, the faster your store is going to take off. Now at this point, I want to show some quick examples of stores that followed this formula and had massive success, even though maybe the data uh, didn't tell them that they should necessarily. Uh, so one of these ones is called Beer Brand. Maybe you've heard of this one. Uh, this is a bootstrap store, meaning they just started from scratch. They didn't take any investment money or anything. And technically, there's not a lot of data when this started out uh, as far as guys who want to buy beard products. Uh, there wasn't any market at all. But uh, this, is, this is a guy who he had, he had a big beard and he had a, a passion for uh, making beard products. And he started a very small niche and really owned that niche with great uh, products for beards, stuff that, that he knew made sense. He created a lot of content and videos that are out there and really owned that niche and scaled it to, you know, a significant revenue and, uh, got on a lot of shows even now another one is called blue kicks now this is another example of a store that sells shoes but instead of selling every shoe under the sun they started with just selling blue shoes it's called blue kicks and it was a, it wasn't just blue shoes but a certain type of summer shoe that you can get and then they differentiated themselves uh, from a lot of the other competition and stood out now, another one is called Swanick Sleep. Now, this is a store that they sell a little bit more products now, but they started off just selling uh, glasses. Not just glasses, but glasses that were rose tinted that were, uh, you know, supposedly were supposed to block blue light and help you sleep better. So they targeted just a really small niche of sub people who were into health and fitness and uh, even a niche inside that that were just interested in trying to figure out how to sleep better. And came out with these blue light blocking glasses that you put on, you know, an hour before you go to sleep, and they're supposed to cut out the blue light and help you sleep better. And they focus on just owning that space, coming out with really great glasses. And now they started to expand outward, and they have some other sleep products now. But that's just what they started on. And all these guys, um, you know, the Swanick, uh, the the beer brand, you know, they were uh, really passionate about what they were selling and created great content and continue to do so today. If you go and check out their store, now the third key. If there's nothing particularly interesting to you or you don't believe you have any expert knowledge or you, you don't really know any interests, well, can you at least identify an opportunity or solve a problem that no other stores out there would do anything about or take advantage of? Now, is there a product out there that you need or you, or you bought and it just isn't living up to expectations and you're frustrated? Or can you go to free Facebook groups maybe and see if there's any issues around one niche that people keep complaining about or asking about that you can possibly capitalize on? So this can be something that scratches your own itch, probably, uh, meaning that you've been looking to buy it, but there's just not out there. It's not really, uh, there's versions, but it's not the version that you want. Now, the fourth key is how hard will it actually be to sell the product? Now, of course, uh, it's one thing to pick a good niche idea, but you also need to figure out uh, what exactly you're going to be selling and the cost of selling it. Now, is it a brand new product that's not even created that you have an idea for? Is it something heavy that will cost a lot to ship? There's a big difference between opening a store that sells airplane parts 
and one that sells dog toys. Now one's a lot easier to get started with. You can create four types of stores today, uh, affiliate marketing based, a drop shipping store, a wholesaling store, or a manufacturing store, or basically a store where you manufacture the product or work with a manufacturer one-on-one -on -one to create your own unique products or at least control the whole manufacturing process. So let's go into what each of these stores means and which one might be right for you uh, to pick for your store. Now, first we have affiliate based stores and you're probably familiar with this method as it's the easiest to get started with today. You don't need to uh, worry about creating products. All you have to do is join an affiliate program like an Amazon's affiliate program or another one's called shareasale.com uh, that sells your physical products. And instead of customers ordering a product through your WooCommerce store or your Shopify store, they're just redirected through an affiliate link to buy from Amazon or to buy from you know, whatever uh, site you're referring. And then if they buy through that site, we're well, going to get a commission for referring them. Now, of course, uh, the issue with this is that you're going to be making the least amount of money per sale, making it harder to reinvest in pay-per-click traffic or advertising to get more traffic to your store. And there's going to be a lot more competition as this has the easiest barrier to entry by far. However, uh, you don't you can get started basically today. And again, you don't have to worry about creating the products or shipping them or anything like that. Next is drop shipping businesses. Now you can find the products out there, physically sell them through your store, uh, and then drop ship them to the customer whenever they buy through your store, meaning that you don't have to store the product or do fulfillment or ship it. You can have a third party company that manufactures the product, do the fulfillment while you just collect the profit and you get to mark up the product any way you choose. And then when, whenever someone buys it from your store, then you just contact that uh, third party supplier and say, hey, this, this person bought it. Can you go ahead and ship it to them? Now, how do you find products to drop ship that are related to your niche? One of the easiest ways is to go to AliExpress. It's one of the you know good ways to begin. And this is one of the top uh, drop shipping sites out there. So just search by keyword and check out all the products on AliExpress. Everything you see, you can list in your store. And when someone buys from your store, will you turn around and order that product from AliExpress at the lower price uh, and the shipping information, add the customer's address and contact info uh, as your order, then mark it as a drop shipping order so they don't send some strange branding or flyers for a company that's not yours and then the, the consumer who bought from your store gets confused. And all these vendors, you know, they, they, they know what you mean by drop shipping. You know, that's what they're here for. And that's why the prices are pretty low. So you can easily check out which vendors have had a lot of experience selling and they're going to, if you order from them and then someone buys from you, they're going to fulfill that order correctly and on time. And you can see uh, the shipping information and prices and everything there. So whenever you go to buy it, you want to choose one called ePacket and then see the price. And then you want to mark up the shipping price and the sale price on AliExpress to your store, add them together and then make sure that you're profiting. So you can offer the product for more than it's selling on AliExpress and the shipping combined, but then you can have free shipping on your store or you can give the product away for free, but then charge, you know, $30 for shipping if the product is $5 and then um, another five bucks to ship it. And then it will get uh, sent. And then you want to enter the customer's address and information that they put into your store to buy it. So AliExpress is just one of many drop shipping sites that you can use and buy from. Now there's even places like Etsy that technically aren't drop shipping sites. But what you can do is contact the creator of the product or the vendor of the product and create a drop shipping agreement with them. And there's wholesaling sites that you can do this too. You can just email the vendor and say, hey, we're looking for a drop shipping program. You can probably send X number of sales your way. Uh, is there some way that we can work out an agreement? And well, they, they will ship the product for them. So you don't even have to store, you have to worry about fulfillment at all. Now, another thing you can do is other than searching drop shipping sites or you know wholesaling or sites like Etsy, is you can reverse engineer uh, what other stores already are selling or similar products you'd like to sell and try to find their dropship supplier or at least a wholesale supplier that they're buying from. So what you want to do is go to Google, type in this phrase site colon myshopify.com and then the keyword. For example, if we were trying to reverse engineer and find some cat toys to dropship, we can type in cat toys and then press enter and you're going to come up with a lot of different stores. Uh, all using Shopify that are selling cat toys. So you can go through them, see what stuff's selling well, see what stuff you'd like to sell. And then you, what you can do is uh, say, for example, on this site, my three cats, if you like um, this dynamite uh, toy, uh, what you can do is uh, drag the image of it to your desktop or save the image and then upload that to Google Images. 
And then you're going to be, you know, you're going to see something like this. And then one of those images, uh, chances are, are, um, is the actual wholesaler or the dropshipper of the original product. So you can, you probably see something like reseller or dropshipper on their site. And what you can do is contact them and say, Hey, I'd like to sell this in my store too. You know, what's the information on your dropshipping program? How's it work? And that's what some way you can, that's a way that you can find products to sell and then reverse engineer them and even find dropshipping products. Uh, two instead of just uh, looking through catalogs. Now, the third thing that you can do is wholesale the products. Now here you're still selling products that are already been manufactured, but you have more control with this as you're going to fulfill the orders yourself this time. So you can buy products from a wholesaler for a certain cost and then store them in a fulfillment center or you can, it can even be your garage. There's a lot of third party fulfillment centers that don't have to be your garage that are pretty inexpensive. And then sell it for any price you want and pocket the profit while you fulfill the order. And this gives you more control over you know, the how much inventory you have, uh, the branding and things like that. Now, depending on the wholesaler, you can even change the products around to include your brand name and white label them, so to speak, uh, to help differentiate yourself from other stores selling the same product. So not only can you sell the product, but then you can put your own logo and name on it as if it's your own. Uh, you can start uh, finding wholesalers by browsing wholesaler directory. So here's example one called worldwidebrands.com. Uh, what you can do is log in and then there's a whole bunch of different wholesalers you can check out. Uh, you can search via keyword, find them, see what they're selling, and then go ahead and contact them. Now you may need a minimum purchase order to get started, uh, but usually sometimes you can negotiate and get a test run to see how it is. And uh, it's possible to contact them directly, just speak to them and see if they're up for drop shipping or see if they'll allow you to rebrand the product with a new name or white label it. And if you can order, you know, a test sample or a smaller order size, if they have a very large order size to begin with, and usually they're, you know, they can negotiate with you and they're reasonable and they'll be willing to work with you in your situation. If, they, if you seem like you're a real business and you're taking this seriously. Now there's tons of wholesale directories out there that you can start finding products in. Also, you can check out uh, best sellers and trending products on Amazon. And then just like before, uh, you can reverse engineer who's manufacturing these products and then sell them as your own. So if you see something selling really well on Amazon or heating up, you know, you can do the same thing like we did with uh, the Google search, get the image and then upload it to Google images and then try to find the original manufacturer uh, and see if they, if you can buy it and have them for sale and you could sell it yourself. Uh, you can just search by the title even in Google and see if you can find the original manufacturer. And another way you can do it is buy actual buy the product and then look to see who manufactured it whenever it arrives to you. You can usually find it that way. Um, but for example, let's say that uh, you bought it, you couldn't find out who manufactured it, you did a Google search, a Google image search, nothing came up. Uh, but you really want to sell that or maybe at least something related to it in your store. What you can do is get pictures of it and then go to a site called Alibaba.com uh, and find actual manufacturers overseas. These are people in China. Now, this is going to bring us to our next step here. As we're going to get into manufacturing, uh, which is number four. And this is the most time consuming to do, but can give you the most leverage as you can actually go out there and create uh, your own 100% unique product no other store has. And it's not that hard to do. So you can get started uh, as easy as going to Amazon.com, searching for top selling products in your niche or searching for at least something similar that you want to invent. Like for example, say you want to sell a certain type of fishing rod that has a new feature or an extra gadget, a uh, small twist to it. What you can do is find an example of a fishing rod on Amazon and images that are pretty close to what you want to be manufactured. And then go to Alibaba.com where you can search for manufacturers and contact one of the manufacturers there to actually manufacture your original product for you. So you, you can get in contact with them, send them all the photos, a description of what you're looking for, and then the extra features. And then they can go in there and actually manufacture this whole unique product for you and you can have your very own manufacturer to sell. Uh, now, a few years ago, this uh, whenever this site was kind of getting started, well, there was a lot of people who they would place orders and they would get something that wasn't even close to what they described, or sometimes they would flat out get nothing. They would you know pay uh, a bunch of money and then nothing would ever show up. Uh, but today, it's a lot safer. Uh, this is a very big company now, and there's ways to review the company, see their ratings, and speak to them directly before you place any sort of money or any sort of order. Now, of course, you still want to do your due diligence whenever you're finding out a manufacturer, especially if they're overseas. And, you, you know, you want to message them, get a price quote, uh, send an example of the product over, uh, agree on a fair price. 
you know, don't worry. You don't have to put in like a thousand dollar order or, or, you know, even a hundred dollar order before you even get to see and hold the product in your hands uh, and see who you're dealing with. You know, if you're dealing with a real manufacturer, uh, you, what you can do is ask them for just a sample. Now you're gonna have to pay a little bit more than the price on their site for one order. Uh, you're gonna have to pay extra for the sample, but you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars or even thousands of dollars. Uh, making a big order, but then everything comes back wrong. You can just have them do a sample, see what it is, then critique it. And if they're not interested in uh, dealing with you or giving a sample, or they want you to do some sort of big order, the thousands of dollars, then they're probably not legitimate. And you can just move on to the next one as there's a lot of different ones to choose from who will be willing to work with you. So like I said, you don't have to risk thousands of dollars uh, to come up with a store with unique tangible products that no one else has physical products that people can buy. Now, if the product you want to invent is too different than uh, a sample you can find or you're having or they're having trouble trying to recreate what you have in your mind, uh, what you can do is reach out to a local prototyper to create an initial prototype and then send that overseas to these manufacturers that you can find. And then that will be a lot easier for them to replicate and start producing. So first, you can just do it yourself, kind of create a prototype yourself if you're good at that stuff or hire a friend or family member who's good at that kind of thing. Uh, to put it together from scratch. But if you don't know of anyone, uh, there's a few things that you can do. What you can do is reach out to uh, tech shop companies or people who have tech shop passes to find someone to create your prototype. Now, what's tech shop? Well, this is a relatively new startup that allows you to rent out 3D printing and manufacturing equipment. It's right in you know a bunch of major cities and use it right there in their store. So you can pay for a pass and go in and get access to all these 3D printing and manufacturing equipment right there to, to do whatever you want with. So what you can do is find someone who has a membership there, whether it's you know on their Facebook page or you can walk in and call the shop and, and ask them that you're looking for a prototyper and you're willing to come up with a fair agreement. Uh, you know, Talk to them and come up with a fair price for them to create an initial prototype for you that you can you know, hold in your hand first before you send overseas. And then the, man, the, the main manufacturer then will have a good idea of what you want. Now, if you don't have one of these near you uh, and you want to work more hands-on uh, and see the prototype face-to-face, -face, what, what you can do is contact a local industrial design firm. You can just do a Google search in your area. Uh, make sure to you know type in the word scam or, or do a little bit of due diligence before you reach out. Um, and then reach out via their phone number or contact form and let them know that you're shopping around and just looking for quotes and you, know, you have some other people interested, but... Uh, you, you know, you're shopping around and trying to get a good deal. Now, the price will be a little bit higher this way uh, than all the other methods we've gone through so far, but you can meet face to face, uh, get your prototype exactly how you want it to look, and then save a lot of time and frustration in the long run. And it's not uh, expensive as you would think. It's not going to be you know, your savings account or anything like that to get a prototype created. So as I said in the introduction, technology has made it easier than ever to start your own unique store, whether you want to set up, set up a uh, simple drop shipping store in a few days, or you want to create a 100% unique product that no one's ever launched uh, from scratch, and you don't have to put up thousands of dollars or drain your savings. So hopefully uh, this video gave you some ideas on how you can get started with your own store, some of the key steps to start taking, or at least got your wheels churning with some ideas on what you can do. Now, of course, one little video uh, isn't going to cover uh, everything you need to do to create a successful store from the ground up. So over the next few days, you're going to be getting some even more in-depth free training videos where we dive into some more advanced tactics in this that allow you to uh, grow your stores faster and stand out from the competition. And plus, we're going to be uh, going over a brand new software called Shop Raider that's going to be coming out. And this is going to help automate the growth of your stores and build your brand nearly hands-free. Now, we're going to be going over that later uh, in depth in another video. What you can do is right now you can enter for a chance to win your own copy of Shopee Raider and, uh, and a course that's going to help you build your store with a lot more detailed information than what we went over that you'll get 100% free at the time of the launch. Now to do this, go ahead and leave a comment below this video about how this helped and then leave one takeaway you got. And then after that, enter your email below the video to get more free videos, be updated about the next training video. These are 100% pure content and then be officially entered to win a lifetime access copy of Shopee Raider and uh, the detailed information course called Ecom Legacy that goes into way more uh, tactics and strategies than what we just covered in this little video. You're going to get those free uh, and you're going to get a special bonus guide on how to build your store as well. 
Then be on the lookout for the next free training video where we're going to go over some even more uh, in-depth deep dive information like the secret to scaling e-commerce stores very fast right from the start and the main reasons why most e-commerce stores don't take off and thrive while others do. Uh, it's going to be some interesting stuff you'll want to hear. So again, go ahead and leave a comment to be entered in the contest and then sign up for more free training videos and I'm going to see you in the next video shortly.